The first step in protein synthesis is going to be DNA transcription. This is where the messenger mRNA transcribes or records the genetic information in the DNA and transports it to the nucleus. In order to do this, in order to make a copy or a recording, the mRNA molecule uses a segment of DNA to serve as its template. So the gene is going to unzip and expose the, the and expose unpaired bases. The loose RNA molecules are going to bind to those exposed DNA pair bases using the uh, cytosine guanine uh, adding to your cell rule. RNA polymerase is going to bind the loose nucleotides together. And once the entire gene has been transcribed into mRNA, whoops, once the entire um, gene has been transcribed into mRNA, the result is a pre-mRNA transcript of the gene. Now the base sequence of the pre-mRNA is going to be complementary to the base sequence in DNA. So what we're going to do is unzip just the section of DNA that we need. We are not going to copy the entire sequence of DNA. We don't need an entire copy of the genome. We just need um, notes for the little section that we are going to be synthesizing at the moment. So we're going to unzip just that section. We're going to make a copy of that section. As soon as we're done, um, that DNA is going to wind itself right back up. However, now that we have created, or now that we have taken down our notes, we now need to modify that pre-mRNA. Um, we need to process it before it leaves the eukaryotic nucleus. There are going to be a few modifications that we're going to make to that primary transcript. The first thing that we're going to do is put a cap on the 5' prime end. This is going to, um, this cap is just a modified guanine nucleotide. It's going to help the ribosome, ribosome determine which end to attach when translation begins. It's kind of like putting a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence or a period at the end of the sentence. We need to indicate where this message starts. So we're going to put a cap on the 5' prime end to indicate, hey, start over here, read in this direction. We're going to also attach a polyadenosine tail, a polyadenine tail of about 150 to 200 adenines at the 3' prime end. This is going to help facilitate the transport of the mRNA out of the nucleus, and it's also going to inhibit the degradation of the mRNA by hydrolytic enzymes. Um, let's see if I can pull up a picture of that for you real quick. All right, here is our poly A tail. Here we go. Here's our poly A tail and our five prime cap. The poly A tail is going to kind of work like a great big needle and help thread it out of the nuclear pores. The next thing we have to do is um, remove the unwanted portions of the pre-mRNA. Pre-mRNA is composed of exons and introns. Exons are going to be the protein encoding regions. These are going to be the part of the gene that is expressed. The introns are non-protein encoding regions. They're just kind of in the way. So the exons are going to be expressed and the introns are in the way. This allows the cell to pick and choose which exons go into particular mRNA. So it's kind of like if you had a, whoops, a great big list of all the words um, I don't know, I don't know, of all the words uh, in the human language. And you could just pick and choose which words you wanted to use to form a sentence. You could change the meaning of a sentence based on which words you chose to include and which words you choose to leave out. This is done through a process known as RNA splicing. RNA splicing is when we use a special enzyme, um, a spliceosome, using a ribozyme, an enzyme made out of RNA rather than just protein, to cut and remove the introns. The remaining exons are going to be spliced back together to result in a mature mRNA transcript. And here's a little bit of what that looks like. Here's our original DNA sequence. Um, the DNA sequence includes exons and introns. We're then going to make a pre-mRNA transcript. The transcript is just going to copy everything down word for word. We're then going to put a 5' prime cap on one end and a polyadenine tail on the other end. Then we're going to use spliceosomes that are going to bind to the introns, snip them out, and then paste the remaining mRNA strand back together with only the exons that we want expressed at that given time. Now, there have been a lot of um, speculation about introns. When I was in college, we were told that introns were called junk DNA. 
it was thought that they served absolutely no purpose at all. But what we have found that as organismal complexity increases, the number of protein coding uh, genes does not keep pace. In other words, just because humans are more complex than goldfish doesn't mean that we necessarily have more DNA. In fact, we have about half the number of chromosomes that goldfish have. But what we do have is the proportion of the genome that is in introns increases. So it is thought that maybe um, those introns include um, the exons might combine in various ways to form more information. In other words, within a single uh, section of uh, genetic material, we can encode a lot more information if we can uh, encode for multiple proteins in a single strand just by picking and choosing what introns are going to be um, removed. Introns may also be involved in regulating gene expression, turning certain genes on and off. So we may not necessarily have more genes, but we have more control over those genes. They may also encourage crossing over events during meiosis to further encourage greater genetic variability. So yes, there is a lot of research now into spliceosomes. There's a lot of research into or introns and their um, per purpose. So this is a really interesting area of study to get into. And that is it for our transcription.